So what was on the technical side? What are the, some of the challenges of getting up, getting to the point where we saw like in the video, the, the pogo stick robot that's actually successfully hopping and then eventually doing flips and all this kind of stuff. Well, in the very early days, I needed some better engineering than I had, than I could do myself. And I hired uh, Ben Brown. You know, we, we each had our way of contributing to the design and we came up with a thing that could, could start to work. I had some stupid ideas about how the actuation system should work. And uh, we, you know, we sorted that out. It wasn't that hard to make it balanced once you get the, the physical machine to be working well enough uh, and have enough control over the degrees of freedom. Uh, and then we very quickly, you know, we started out by having it floating on an inclined air table. And then uh, that only gave us like six foot of travel. So once it started working, we switched to a thing that could run around the room on a, another device. It's hard to explain these without you seeing them, but you, you probably know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. a planarizer. And, uh, and then the next big step was to make it work in 3D, which that was really the scary part. With these simple things, you know, people had inverted pendulums at the time for, for years and they could control them by driving a cart back and forth. But could you make it work in three dimensions while it's bouncing and all that? And, uh, but it turned out, you know, not to be that hard to do, uh, at least at the level of performance we achieved at the time. So, okay, you mentioned inverted pendulum, but like, uh, can you explain how a hopping stick in 3D can control, can balance itself? Yeah, sure. what, are, what what does the actuation look like? Uh, you know, the simple story is that there's three things going on. There's something making it bounce. And, you know, we, we had a system that was uh, estimating how high the robot was off the ground. And using that, you know, uh, there's energy that can be in three places in a, in a pogo stick. One is in the spring, one is in the altitude, and the other is in the velocity. Mm -hmm. And so when at the top of the hop, it's all in the, the uh, height. And so you could just measure how high you're going and thereby, thereby have an idea of a lot about the cycle and you could decide whether to put more energy in or less. So that's one element. Then there's a part that you decide where to put the foot. And if you think when you're landing on the ground with respect to the center of mass, so if you think of a pole vaulter, the key thing the pole vaulter has to do is get its body to the right place when the pole gets stuck. If they're too far forward, uh, they kind of get thrown backwards. If they're too far back, they go you know, over. And what they need to do is get it so that they go mostly up to get over the thing. And you know, high jumpers is the same kind of thing. So there's a calculation about where to put the foot, and we did something you know, relatively simple. And then there's a third part to keep the body at an attitude that's upright, because if it gets too far, you, know, you could hop and just keep <laughs> rotating around, but if it gets too far, then you run out of motion of the joints at the hips, so you have to do that. And we did that by applying a torque between the legs and the body every time the foot's on the ground. You only can do it while the foot's on the ground. Mm -hmm. In the air, you know, it, it the physics don't work out. How far does it have to tilt before it's too late to be able to balance itself, or it's impossible to balance itself, correct itself? Well, you're, you're asking an interesting question because um, in those days, we didn't actually optimize things. And they probably could have gone much further than we did and then had higher performance. And we just kind of got you know a sketch of a solution and worked on that. And then in years since, some people working for us, some people working for others, people came up with all kinds of uh, equations for or you know algorithms for how to do a better job, be able to go faster. Uh, one of my students worked on getting things to go faster. Another one worked on uh, climbing over obstacles because when you're running, it's one on the open ground. It's one thing if you're running like up a stair. Uh, you have to adjust where you are, otherwise things don't work out right. You land your foot on the edge of the step. So there's other degrees of freedom to control if you're getting to you know more realistic, practical situations. I think it's really interesting to ask about the early days because you know believing in yourself, believing that there's something interesting here, and then you mentioned find, finding somebody else, Ben Brown. What's that like? Finding other people with whom you can build this crazy idea and actually make it work. Probably the smartest thing I ever did <laughs> is to find the other people. Yeah. I mean, when I look at it now, you know, I look at Boston Dynamics and all the really excellent engineering there. You know, people who really make stuff work. You know, I'm I'm only the the dreamer 